I'm back. Oh, crap. Okay. <laughs> I'm back. It's been a little while. Um, I cannot believe that it's already February. Like that happened literally so fast. So this will be the fourth installment in my annual series, which will be an ultra transparent, super deep dive look into my business as a freelance copywriter. We're running through the numbers. We're running through my Fiverr analytics. We're running through like how things have grown and shaped over the years and culminated into, uh, kind of a stupid amount of money and not in like a braggy way, like just in a sometimes I wonder like, how am I doing this? You know, how and how, but that's for another day. So I've gotten a lot of questions asking when this video is gonna come out and the answer is right now. Hey, I'm Carrie. Welcome back to my channel or welcome for the very first time all around. Welcome. I'm Carrie Blogger, a career freelancer. Uh, I changed my intro and I literally cannot say it. Uh, a, a career freelancer who works with brands uh, around the world. I don't know. Uh, and in today's Freelance Friday video, like I said, we're running through all of the numbers, all of the details of what a freelance copywriting business can and in fact does look like going into year 10 which is also bonkers, that happens so fast. So at the end of this video, I will have some questions, some hit points that I would like to cover and hopefully provide some perspective for you. Number one, huge question everyone asks, which is a little uncomfortable, but we should discuss for pay transparency, is how much money did I make last year in 2022? And keeping in mind that I had a baby last January, he's a year old now, and I took off three whole months pretty much entirely off for maternity leave. So my goal for the year, which I thought was probably a little too optimistic, was to get back to $100,000 for the year and still be that six figure copywriter. Ugh. Question two is, am I still working exclusively on Fiverr? As I've said in the past, Fiverr has been my primary entire exclusive source of income. I wasn't ever cold pitching to people. I was never marketing for myself. I just built my little corner on the platform and let the work roll into me. Is that still the case? Number three is can passive income, that beautiful word that everyone shines a spotlight on while you're sitting on a beach with your Jaguar in the background telling everyone how much better your life is than theirs, right? Um, is that enough to actually float my boat? Is that something that over time, really realistically in, in my little case study can grow into something that will sustain your income and at the very least provides a sense of stability. Number five, do I think I'll still keep doing this? Like as you look through the numbers and see this, I'm gonna talk a bit about like, you know, finding a nice work-life balance, finding sustainable places to put your energy, finding like ways to invest in yourself and your professional career so that it grows over time. Um, you know, 10 years in, do I really think this is still fulfilling and lucrative and feasible to still call myself and be a freelancer? And number six, another huge question that I constantly get asked is like, how did I get here? How do you get here? If you are interested in building a freelance career, either as a writer like myself or in any other creative space, what does it take? Okay, let's run through it. How I work. This is the same today as it has been the entire past 10 years. I work alone. If you have been around my channel, you probably saw that drama filled video that did not mean to be so drama filled. And <clears throat> I will never call that out and then do the same under the table. It's just me, I don't use AI, at least for the moment. I'm toying with the idea of considering how it could work into my workflow just to automate some automatable parts of my tasks. But right now, no AI, no outsourcing, no minions. <laughs> it's all me because I truly love what I do and that's part of why I am still doing it. When I work, last year and previous years, I have always used to say that I worked seven days a week, two to three hours per day. And for the first year that has not happened. This has changed and I've been very purposeful about it. We've been committed to taking Sundays off and we just call that as a family day. And I try really, really hard to not put anything on Sunday. Minimal work as well on Saturdays if I can swing it. So I'm really just trying to keep weekends carved out for family time because that is especially so important for my husband and I to stay really connected and also for my child and I to like have that family time where 
where I'm not on a computer, you know, it's like, he's only gonna be a year old once. So right now my work hours have stretched up just a little bit. When my husband comes home at three o'clock from his job as a teacher, uh, that's when I go to work. Let's say I work three and a half hours a week times five days. Plus we'll add another three hours that I'm sure I work. So I work about 20 hours a week, 15 to 20. Who I work with, who are my clients, who the heck is paying me to do this work and how do I find them? But first, let's take a second to talk about today's video sponsor, Everlance. Tax deductions don't have to be difficult. With Everlance, there are no more lost receipts and no more overlooked deductions. Everlance automatically tracks your business expenses and mileage so that you can keep more of your earnings. Did you know that you can deduct $65.50 for every 100 miles you drive? Everlance helps the average self-employed person track and deduct $6,500 every year. If you are a gig worker, a small business owner, or a self-employed person with a side hustle, Everlance is built for you. Use my link in the description and sign up to try Everlance for free. Thanks again to Everlance for sponsoring this video. Who I work with. In total, since I started on Fiverr, I've had 9,108 different clients that I've worked with, which is bonkers. Like every time that number gets bigger, how baby? It just blows my mind. So in the past year alone, that has been 145 new clients that I've had the pleasure of meeting and connecting with and delivering work to. As I was scrolling through last year's orders, I just tried to like pick out who could I genuinely remember from last year of working with. So in no particular order, just for a little bit of background, here are some of the interesting client projects that I got to work with on Fiverr. And you'll notice very quickly, it is so random. Mining education, like literal like mining of rocks in the ground, like or that education, really gorgeous handmade jewelry, patented 3D wreath making designs, like, hello, so cool. Uh, there's a luxury hair care line with some rare fruit extract I have literally never heard of, and I've written for a lot of beauty stuff over the years, so that was super cool. Uh, a chef training program, we have boutique hotel marketing, dating programs for people with chronic illnesses, a translation company in Argentina, uh, STEM education and school IT support specialists, college mental health support. There was a super luxury personal trainer in Washington, D.C. who literally charged like $350 per session for a one-on-one -on -one, like physio, it was bonkers, it was so, so high-end. Restored super rare mid-century modern furniture, a mold testing lab, I did a lot of work for that, learned a lot about mold, <laughs> and electric bike modifications. Um, fascinating. And then on retainer, spoiler for question, whatever it was, is primary my sole and only source of income anymore? It is not for the first year. That is not true. I have three clients with retainer contracts. That's just another fancy word for like, we have both signed a six month renewable contract that they will hire me for a minimum established amount every month. And then it's flexible within that, how they choose to use that balance. And they can add more things monthly as needed to kind of grow with their needs. So those three clients all happen to be on the West Coast like me, which is also very unique because in the past on Fiverr, which is a global platform. I was literally working with people in every country, everywhere. And now organically, everything about my business has happened organically. All three of these clients are on the West Coast like me. And I've actually had the very unique opportunity to go and meet all of them and visit their offices, which I have never done before. I've never met clients in person ever. Like I barely even like talk to them like on Zoom or anything. And so the fact that all three of them I've been able to meet in person has been so cool. And it's like such a different direction for the feeling of my business that I really enjoy. Um, but what do, I, what do I do? Like I said that I'm a freelance copywriter. I said that it's like, you know, marketing writing essentially, but what does that actually look like? Amazon listings, website content, product descriptions, blogs, emails, and about pages. Those are the six things that any random client on Fiverr can order from me for. With my retainer clients, I also offer things that match their needs. So for them, I've kind of expanded my services a bit, especially for one of my clients to be much more of a like marketing manager role, which is very unique and interesting. For them, I offer things like social media management, um, kind of like a marketing strategy and administration between teams role, graphic design for their Instagram, which has been really fun. Instagram captions, I don't offer that on Fiverr, but that has also been very fun. The numbers, this number is just so big, it's, it's bonkers. How many orders have I completed on Fiverr? So just on the Fiverr platform, we're not talking about all the work I'm doing for my retainer clients, just on Fiverr. In total <laughs> is 11,314 orders. Like, 
that is so many orders. I'm gonna take off six that have happened in January and February. That ends up with a total of 214 Fiverr orders completed in 2022. And I know that exact number because I have last year's video to see what the total was then. My impressions on Fiverr, I'll show it to you for transparency. It's not very accurate right now because I am basically not working on Fiverr right now. Like everything's live, everything's fine. My impressions are okay. But compared to where it has been in the past, this is like a drop in the bucket. That was great at the time. And now that it's not, that's also great. Uh, you might be wondering what my highest paying gig is. And if you're not, I'm gonna tell you anyway. <laughs> uh, website content is my highest paying gig and this is the same as last year. Um, so the all time earnings for just that one gig, just website content, <laughs> that gig alone has earned $179,931. And so looking from last year, I can see that that gig alone in 2022 earned me $16,000, which is how many times can I say bonkers in a single video? Can I really justify charging that much money? And like, at what point do you raise your prices to be charging this much or close to this much money? Like when, how do you justify it? And there's no perfect scale here, um, but looking at all the details, hopefully you can put some perspective into putting it together for yourself. Um, looking at my performance statistics, this is just an overview, 100% inbox response rate. My inbox response time average overall, all 24 hours is on average two hours, which is the same as it has been. And then 100% response rate in the order form, delivered on time, always and forever, never delivered an order late, ever. Ever, that's just an absolute no brainer, like obviously. Reviews, looking at this year, my total review count is 7,641, which means that in 2022, I got 170 reviews during that year. And looking at the total completed, that means that 79% of my clients chose to leave a review. You obviously like want to impress people to the point where they care to leave a review and really share their thoughts. I feel like if you're not getting a lot of reviews, it's because whatever you have done does not impress them either way. It either does not offend them or does not impress them. What were those reviews? Okay, 167 five-star reviews. I got two four-star reviews and one two-star review. So if I do the math there, it's a 4.97 star average. Yet again, it's literally exactly the same as last year. Again, you might be wondering. Carrie, why are you telling us this? Just tell me how much money you make. Just do it. Just give me the number. That's what I'm here for. And if that's true, cool. I guess just like skim and skip to the end. But I like to think that if you are genuinely thinking, what can a business like this look like? What could your own business look like? Or you're just like genuinely curious, like how I do it. This is how I do it. It doesn't just happen. Oh, I guess that's it. I'll just say it doesn't just happen. This is how, this is why, this is why it's important to talk about this stuff before we get into a, just a dollar number because uh, I actually had to look up my bad review. I couldn't remember what that two star review was from last year. If you've been on my channel, you know how I feel about outsourcing and especially under the table drop servicing. So it is absolutely hilarious to me that they said it feels like she resells gigs to other people who write for her and she sells to her clients because no, no. <laughs> and then of course we have lots of good reviews, which is what I need to just focus the positive on. And apparently I did a pretty good job on because I literally forgot the bad review this year, which is not always the case. So that's kind of the, the backstory of how my Fiverr business functions how many impressions I get, how many clicks I get, how many orders I've had, how many clients I've worked with, and then ultimately what they think of the price that I'm charging and, th and the value that I'm delivering. That all summarizes into the money, the, the thing we're all unfortunately on our little hamster wheel rat race for. Um, if you're not United States of America, IRS department auditing agent, um, you could just skip 15 seconds forward. This is not for you. My math right now is based on when money moves out of accounts and is actually deposited to me. So for example, like the graph that I see of tracking in my bullet journal planner looks slightly different than the graph that's on Fiverr and everything flexes a little bit up to a month, depending on when the work was done, when the money was transferred, when it was cleared, 
those kinds of things, I'm not tax frauding, okay? I guarantee I pay my taxes, I do it well. I do my best. <laughs> okay, here we are. My yearly growth chart. I usually put this at the very, very end of the video, but I think we'll start with this and then I'll give you the breakdown of exactly like where all of this money comes from and all these things that I'm doing. So we start back at the beginning. In 2013, I started on Fiverr at the very end of the year. I was only like really doing anything for about six weeks um, from October to the end and I earned six thousand dollars 2014 i was a full-time college student doing my undergraduate degree i was just very pleasantly surprised and happy with what was going on on fiverr and my little burgeoning out of nowhere freelance copywriting business that turned into twenty two thousand dollars for the year 2015 it was my last year of my undergraduate degree i was taking like 21 to 23 college credits every single term so i was keeping a massive lid on that and trying to juggle everything. I earned $30,000 that year. Then in 2016, I was in my one year master's program for music education uh, to get my you know, teaching license and stuff, which I thought I was gonna do with my life. Actively cut business as far down as I could because I knew that that was gonna take so much of my time. So in that year, it went down just a little bit and I earned $24,000. In 2017, I was officially going full time into this copywriting freelance thing I had fallen into by chance. Full steam ahead, I made $61,000. 2018 was my first full year in Fiverr Pro, which is a program where it's basically like the top one or 2% of the platform you have to apply for. There's like vetting and theoretically, it's like all people who are like verified professional pro people. The program has changed a little bit since I first started, but that first year of 2017, 2018, of it being brand new, me being a leader in it, that changed my business. So that year I finally skipped over the six figure mark and earned $103,000. 2019, my goal was, and still is to just maintain, like just keep doing what I'm doing, to keep loving what I'm doing and adjust along the way. So I did, I earned $105,000 that year. 2020 was a mess for a lot of people for, well, not just a lot of people, for everyone for a lot of reasons. I scaled up to $120,000 in 2020, helping a lot of businesses, especially make the shift into their digital space, which was very rewarding. In 2021, my goal last year was just to maintain. Again, like that's all I had planned. I wasn't trying to like push for any hard income goals. I wasn't trying to launch new services. I wasn't trying to expand onto new platforms or build a team or outsource. I just wanted to keep doing what I do. And I, bonkers, out of the blue, did not expect it, hit $140,000 last year, which if you're following my graph is the highest I've, I've ever done. I was literally tallying at the end of the year and I thought like, did I really make that much money? That is crazy. Again, working two to four hours every day, like this, it's 15 to 20 hours a week. And like, that's, that brings us to this year. We're in 2022. I started the year having my baby in January and then I took a three month leave, like almost entirely off. I only did a couple projects for some repeat clients. And during that maternity leave, I knew it was obviously going to hit my income because hello, I took a quarter of the year off. Um, and then when I picked things back up, I organically grew into this new way to work with my retainer clients. I, you know, really fostered those relationships, not in a salesy way, but in like a, let's see what this opportunity can bring us kind of way. And that has totally, as I've said over and over in this video already, transformed like the way that I work and what is most important to me. Okay, um, having taken off a quarter of the year, da 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 da, $124,000. Oh my gosh, that's like a stupid amount of money. And like, I could be making way more money. Like, that's the other thing. People always comment every year and they're like, oh, but if you just worked for 60 hours a week, it could be like a quintillion you blah, 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 billionaire. And it's like, obviously, I don't want that. <laughs> obviously, I don't. If that's not obvious to you yet, you're not watching this video or any of my videos. And I want to do business that I can feel ethically proud of and deliver work that I am creatively proud of and spend my days doing things that I am like fulfillingly proud of. And I can still have time for my family and in a space that 
makes me feel good and all of these things like all add up to balance so that you're not getting burned out but it just grows organically and like effectively for you I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful for all the clients who choose to work with me. I'm so grateful for any of you who take the time to watch this and care and are interested in it. I'm just, I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my support network with my parents and I, everything I am so grateful for. And this is just like the reincarnation of that. Back to the numbers, off the gratitude train, we're done with that. Uh, I wanna show you kind of how that number works out the past couple years it has been it being passive income has been such a super tiny part of my business and income that i was like this is this is not worth it you know it's it's a nice little cherry on top but it's really not and for the first year i feel like this actually has turned into a nice little cushion chunk that i'm pretty proud of and that took like four ish years to really get to the point where i'm i'm feeling like it's really adding something to my finances I'm saying passive income is definitely not the instant do all be all financial hook that many other people pretend like it is, or maybe it is for them. I might be doing it wrong, I probably am. And then my active income here, we have my Fiverr income was $65,000. My retainer contracts were 38,000 and then other random work, including one-off orders from people off platform or sponsors for videos. Um, just random things like that. That was $9,000 that just um, tallies on top. I just feel like I have a lot of random stuff going on this past year. Okay, if you're still watching and following along, that was a long string of numbers and that was an even longer stream of words from me. Will you please comment and say, yep, that adds up. I literally don't care how old this video is when you do it. I still enjoy on last year's video when people comment and say, I am a licensed data scientist. It literally makes my day. I love to see it. I will always heart it. I will always like it. On this one, just say, yep, that adds up. And then I know for sure that you actually made it to the end of the video. You actually care. You actually took it into heart and you weren't just there for like, oh, big number. Okay. Do I think I'll keep doing what I'm doing? Is it still fulfilling, lucrative, and feasible to work for myself in the freelance sphere? Yes. Um, and question number six. Another one that I think you're probably waiting for. How did I get here and what does it take to do for yourself? If you're genuinely interested, I have playlist after playlist of, of so many videos, like 250 plus videos of advice on this topic. But to summarize, it takes a lot of practice. Practice, 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 practice now, practice during, practice after with sellable skills that add real value, that really offer a result for the person that you are serving, not only for yourself. And by that, I mean, just because you want to be a writer, for example, and you want to work in a freelance space because you want to make money, like all of those things can be true and good for you, but your wants do not override what the client needs. So if you want to be a writer, but you do not have the skills to be doing that yet, it's not gonna work. And no matter how much you want it, the need of the client has to match. And unfortunately, that's like a hard thing to say. So go back to practice, practice, practice. As I've said in previous videos, you're not just a service provider, you are a small business owner and you are directing your own business. And that is a huge added uh, added task on top. Detail-oriented organization, having a commitment to always continue improving, never settling for, oh, that's good enough, but really think I wanna take pride in this and continue to grow through it. Yeah, and then add, you know, a dash of luck and privilege. And yes, I said privilege. Before you come at me and comment something angrily, I do wanna say, every year I say that, and every year I get a flurry of like comments calling me out of saying like, don't say it's privilege, blah, 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 blah. Hold on, just stop for a sec, okay? It is privileged and I don't need to like go through a whole long list of every single thing in my life that has carried me or helped carry me to this point, but it is privilege and I recognize that and don't come at me for recognizing that. And if you personally are uncomfortable about the fact that you very likely carry some amount of privilege too, I just want us to sit here for one second and just think about why that might make you uncomfortable and how we can turn that discomfort into acknowledging it and maybe making some positive changes that then turn it into a positive effect for everybody else who may not carry that same privilege. Can we try that? Okay, 
and rant. I just needed to throw that in at the end. I waited all the way till the end. Um, that was my self-control. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, this was a long one. This is a long one in the making and it's one that I really enjoy doing every single year. I hope that this provides some perspective for you if you are building your own business or thinking about what's possible or just, I personally am really fascinated with what other people do with their lives and how they structure their professional growth and goals. So if that's you and you're totally unrelated, you're still welcome to be here. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to check out the links to stuff I've got going on in the pinned comment and description down below including a link to my copywriting course if you want to learn more about how I do what I do, my merch, if you want to be adding to that slim $85 of profit from last year, my book, if you would like to read a dystopian sci-fi novel, it has nothing to do with my work in marketing, but it is fantastic. And I will personally ship you a signed copy if you order from carryfrenchauthor.com. I will personally sign it and ship it off to you. I'll even include a nice little note, maybe in some extras, just if you say that you came from this video, I can find something extra to throw in for you for free. And I would love to do that. All right, this is too long. Okay, remember you are worth so much more than your workload and let's get back to work. Mm -hmm.